Hi, my name is Nicholas Allen, and I'm president of the HEMA Club at BCU, and this is Kiana Shukrin. Uh, I am from the XKDF Network, and I will be talking about giant slaying in HEMA. That is fighting opponents who are taller, stronger, and more aggressive than you are. Uh, when you're talking about that, there are a few key points to, keep, to consider. Um, one is mindset, and that's very important. Uh, there's a huge difference between being aggressive versus being assertive. Um, when you are being aggressive, that is stepping into the fighting ring and acknowledging that that ring belongs to your opponent, because being aggressive is taking space. Being assertive is holding space. When you walk into a fighting ring with an assertive mindset, it means that you are claiming that space as your own and your opponent must take it back from you. As a smaller fighter, that is extremely important to approach a fight with an assertive mindset. Uh, another key point is good structure. If you are a smaller fighter and you are not as strong as your opponent, uh, you will not be able to rely on strength as a crutch if your technique is sloppy. Uh, you can't just power through if you don't do it right. You have to have very good structure. So make sure to drill that as often as you can. Experiment with fine adjustments to your technique. Change the position of your foot ever so slightly. Change your grip ever so slightly. Work through every part of your body and make as many refinements as you can to optimize the amount of leverage uh, that you are able to, to transmit, the amount of uh, power that you're able to, to transmit to your opponent in a fight. Uh, another key point is explosive footwork. When you're a smaller fighter, your opponent is generally going to have a greater reach. Um, you're going to have to cross that space with explosive plyometric footwork. Uh, so the two key steps are the triangle step and gather step for this, uh, which I will demo now. If Nick is my opponent, uh, the triangle step is a passing step out to the side. So I'm taking my rear foot, stepping out as far as I can, and then compassing with my back foot back into a fighting stance. My new front foot should be pointing at my opponent. My back foot should be about shoulder width apart, some distance between my feet for good structure. I don't want to over compass. Um, and I want to be offline. Um, the reason for this is what we call the mother and center lines. So, the mother line is the line that connects you with your opponent. If Nick and I are fighting, this line is the mother line. Um, right now, our center lines are also aligned with the mother line. So, my center line comes out from my sternum, straight out, center of mass, towards my opponent. And his is the same towards me. If I make that triangle step, Suddenly, his center line is not aligned with the mother line. My center line is aligned with the mother line. This means that I will have the advantage when it comes to leverage and structure. The other step that is very important uh, for traversing distance quickly is the gather step. This can be done forwards or backwards. You are bringing your feet together for a brief moment and separating back out. It's very similar to a simple step when you move your front foot first to go forward or your rear foot to go backwards, um, but you are moving the other foot, so to go backwards you're moving your front foot and stepping out, to go forwards you're moving your rear foot and stepping out. Um, it is a slight amount faster than a simple step, uh, but has a similar result. Yeah. Um, so from the other side, the triangle step looks like this. I step out and compass to the other side. I step out and compass so that I am always facing my opponent. Uh, the gather step, I bring my front foot forward, or my rear foot forward, and my front foot out to go forward. To go backwards, I bring my front foot back and my rear foot out back into a fighting stance to go backwards. Cool. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, the other reason that footwork is extremely important is what we call the danger zone, or affectionately, the donut of death. Um, when you are in reach of your opponent, so that they can hit you, but you cannot yet hit them. If you are a smaller fighter, um, there is a point where, at full extension, I cannot reach him, but he can still reach me. Um, 
the taller your opponent is, the larger that window will be, uh, or the longer their arms, the longer that window will be. That is the place where smaller fighters tend to get killed, um, because there's not a lot that you can do. When you get in close, um, past the opponent's point, you can still thrust, they cannot. Um, and both of you can still cut, but they will be cutting with the strong. Um, so, the, the biggest concern for smaller fencers is learning how to safely cross that, that donut of death. Footwork is one of the ways to do that. Um, there are also some other ways in which you provoke your opponent, which we'll get to in a moment. There are three types of opponents that you're going to face as a smaller fighter. Uh, one is the bean pole. Uh, the bean pole is somebody who is a lot taller than you, not necessarily bigger or stronger, but has the advantage in terms of reach. Uh, they will overrun you and, and hit you in the head, um, or thrust you before you can reach them. They, they will have a much larger danger zone than other types of opponents. For these fencers, you want to go underneath them to the lower openings. Uh, you, would, you need to guard above so that they don't hit you in the head. You need to try to pass their point and close the distance. Uh, the ways you can do that are one, to provoke. Uh, in, I believe, did I say Wallerstein? Yeah, Wallerstein. Wallerstein. Uh, there are techniques to do just that. One is called the Asp's Tongue, which is my personal favorite. It is standing in long point and jabbing towards the opponent's face. Having something coming at your face is very unpleasant and will provoke a response. The other way, which unfortunately uh, requires you to take your sword offline slightly so it isn't quite as good, in my opinion, uh, is the peacock's tail, taunting your opponent into closing range. Um, it can still be very effective in the right circumstance. Another way to close the distance uh, is to clear the line. Help me again, please stand at long point. Um, there are several ways to do that. You can strike an up. You can use a kumpao. Um, sometimes you can use a shielhao. There are several ways to do that. Um, if I am fencing and throwing a zverkao, and the threat is still on me, I can use the cross to shove and clear the line that way. Um, so all of these are effective ways to clear the line. Uh, you can use sneaky footwork. So. Uh, instead of pressing your opponent in a lateral direction, which causes them to feel threatened and back up, you can flank them, you can use a cross step, so I can come here, I can come there, and move around my opponent. Um, and I can do similar things, I can switch my feet. So if I'm standing in long point, um, there's a point where if your non-dominant side, if that foot is forward, you're not going to have quite as much reach as you would if your dominant side is forward. Without moving the rest of your body, you can switch your feet to make that happen. Um, you can switch so that your non-dominant is in front to give you extra leap when you move your dominant foot. Or if you're planning on attacking from a static position, you can do the opposite. Uh, the next type of opponent that you will face is called the boulder. Uh, the boulder is somebody who is bigger and stronger than you, but who's not necessarily aggressive. They're the immovable rock in the center of the ring. Um, the way to deal with them is to go weak or soft, uh, just like there are hard and soft martial arts, like the difference between Taekwondo and Aikido. Um, you can also use hard and soft techniques in your fencing. When your opponent is hard, you should go soft. When your opponent is soft, you should go hard. Um, yes, please. Uh, so, a simple binding drill that illustrates this principle, we come to a bind. If he presses me hard, I will let him press me and snap around with the back edge. If he goes soft, I will cut off and step in using superior force. The other thing you can do with a boulder is use that footwork to dance around and work to the openings, make them move. Um, be patient, use leverage. With the final type of fighter, uh, that is going to be the Bufel, for which there is actually a name in the manuscripts. 
uh, the buffle is somebody who is not only necessarily bigger and stronger than you, but also more aggressive. And buffle applies to anybody who's more aggressive, regardless of the, the size discrepancy. <clears throat> um, with the buffle, you're going to want to sidestep. They will rush in, they will be aggressive. You can sidestep and, and use that triangle step footwork to get around them. Uh, you want to get offline quickly and explosively. You want to fight smarter, and you want to use your speed and agility. Uh, you, regardless of which type you're fighting, you would like to observe and control your opponent. You want to watch for tells. Uh, you also want to see if there's any patterns of movement or favorite moves that they fall back on. Maybe if you go into a certain guard, they always pull back into a different guard, or they always throw the same attack. Um, you can use that to set up situations where you know what your opponent's going to do. Uh, if you notice they have a tell, you can take advantage of that to earn an extra bit of time to respond. Uh, but if you're able to set them up, you're able to interrupt their OODA loop, Observe, Orient, Decide, Act. Uh, this is the thought process that we go through when we make a decision in fighting and in any, anything else. Uh, it's four steps. You observe the situation, you orient to it, you decide on a course of action, and then you, you execute the technique. Uh, if you can catch your opponent in the middle of that loop, complete your loop before they complete theirs, that is the goal. Um, you can also use Ox and Zverk. Ox and Zverk are going to be your best friends as a smaller fighter because they protect your head. So, if Nick and I are fighting, if I am an Ox, uh, I am covered, and because I'm smaller, this guard can cover more of my body than it would for a taller fencer. Taller fencers, the weak of their sword might be at thigh level or waist level. For me, it covers a lot more of my body. Ox can be done on both sides of the body, both the left and the right. You do not have to switch sides in order to defend attacks from different sides. You want to show um, the front angle too? Just ox at both sides of the front? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we normally teach you to tuck your hands like that, and notice how she's able to have it out in that um, area, so that way she's able to get really nice structure from top and bottom. Uh, this guard is absolutely fantastic. Also, it leads into the attack combination, uh, which is a Zverkow combination. The strike of Zverkow uh, both starts and ends in Ox. To execute this strike, um, I put my thumb on the flat, bring the sword up over my head. I can see my thumb the whole time. You're alternating between back edge and front edge. I am going to use my dominant hand, the top hand, to support the structure and keep the cross guard out of my face. My bottom hand is powering all of the speed and leverage of that strike. Um, whenever you strike in terms of good structure, your shoulder is the sun, your hand is the earth, the pommel is the moon. The earth goes around the sun, the sun goes around the moon. With this strike especially, you do not want to be powering the strike with the top hand with the bottom hand. Um, this strike can be done as an Oberswerk, an Unterswerk, or on the horizontal. It can attack all of your opponent's openings without once leaving your head open to attack. So, um, if I make this strike, I can attack from above, here. I can attack from underneath, here. I can attack on the horizontal to the ear. From the other side, I can do horizontal, Underneath or again above. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, yes. So to attack, I'll just go back and forth. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, I can attack on the horizontal, from above, from underneath. Nice. This strike is going to be one of your best friends as a shorter fencer. It will help you to close the distance safely. It can be done with explosive triangle step footwork and is actually more effective that way. Um, and it can attack any of your opponent's openings without leaving your head vulnerable. 
Uh, one really high percentage combination that I particularly like is from Von Danzig. It's a two-fold failure. You throw the first strike as a failure to the ear. Zverkow horizontally. Um, you pull the strike before it hits. If they happen to, to parry your blade and give you a little extra momentum, that's fine. You step out to the other side explosively, again with a triangle step, to the other ear. When they go to parry, you step through with your back foot, use your bottom hand to rotate the sword around and double to the opponent's mouth. Cool. On the other side? Yep. We might do it in different angles too. Strike one. Strike two. Strike three. And then when you're going through, you're protected by the crown, right? Oh, uh, yes. So, as you are going through, you are not vulnerable because of where your opponent's force is. Uh, also, we talked about controlling your opponent. If you notice that your opponent is parrying hard and wide, you can set up this pattern and use it to control what your opponent does to your advantage. Strike to one side. Strike to the other side. His momentum is now pushing away from me. As I come under, I'm using his force to bring my blade around. Even if he tries to adjust, my cross guard is protecting me as I step through and hit to the mouth. Uh, so that is an overview of some of the principles that can help you as a smaller fencer to fight opponents who are stronger, larger, or more aggressive. Cool. Thank, you. Thank you very much to Kian. It's always a pleasure to have her around. Uh, hopefully she'll be back next week. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.